We were first introduced to the Operational Amplifier, or OPAMP for short, in the Introduction to Modern Electronics course. In that lesson, we went through what an op-amp can be used for, like a comparator or digital-to-analog converter. But the main purpose of an op-amp is to amplify signals. As we learned before, sometimes an electric signal becomes too weak when it is transmitted over great distances, just like the sound of your voice yelling at someone who is far away. And the solution to that is to have something to amplify and repeat the signal to the receiver. The two types of amplifiers that we looked at in depth were the non-inverting and inverting amplifiers. In this lesson, we'll take a quick and closer look. We'll take a quick and closer look at the theory of the inverting amplifier and then build one up and see how well it works. The standard inverting amplifier circuit looks like this, one op amp and two resistors. It's really that simple. The input is whatever AC signal you want to amplify, and the output will be that signal amplified. An important thing to know is that every op amp has a limitation on frequencies that it can amplify. For example, the 741 op amp that we've been using can easily amplify audio signals that are in the kilohertz range. But as the input frequency approaches one megahertz, the 741 op amp can no longer amplify the signal. This point is called a unity gain, and every op amp has this attribute. For the inverting amplifier, we determine the amplification amount by this simple formula. R2 divided by R1 equals the amplification of the input signal. So if, for example, we use a 100 kilo ohm resistor for R2 and a 1 kilo ohm resistor for R1, the output will be 100 times the magnitude of the input signal. This makes an amplifier easily tested in audio frequencies because it should make an input signal sound much louder. For this experiment, we will build up the basic inverting amplifier circuit, input some audio to it from our laptop, and listen to the differences through some headphones. To build this circuit, you will need a breadboard, jumper wire kit, and from the analog parts kit, a stereo cable with exposed wires, two 9 volt battery connectors, an audio jack breakout board, 741 op amp, two 1 kilo ohm resistors, one 10 kilo ohm resistor, and two 10 microfarad capacitors. So like the other lessons, we'll go step by step, building the circuit so that you can follow along and build it correctly with us. With the circuit complete, let's open up the sound card oscilloscope program that we've been using in this course and tell it to start generating a tone. The initial tone shouldn't be very loud. Now we'll modify the circuit so that the audio signal goes through the amplifier. The sound is the same since R1 and R2 are the same value.
Now we'll replace R2 with a 10 kilo ohm resistor, which will make the amplification 10 times. And now the output sound is obviously much, much louder. If we swap the 10 kilo ohm resistor back for the original 1 kilo ohm resistor, you can hear the unamplified output again. Try putting in normal sound or music from your MP3 player or laptop and see how the amplifier works with it when you set R2 to different values. In the real world, op amps are used like mad all over the place for filtering and amplifying signals. They can be used on wireless or audio or many other types of signals. Sometimes op amps are even part of a custom IC package like on this remote control car PCB. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Now that we've learned the basics of the analog world, let's move on and look at more advanced ways of amplifying audio signals.